next one. She had an anaphylaxis problem to corn. Smelling or eating corn, what would happen to you? My throat would close. I've used six EpiPens and um, my mom, her major concern was my throwing up. And that was a pretty good concern because I was, you know, dying from that. But my major concern was my allergies because corn is in so many things. And um, I mean, it's in medicine, it's in gasoline, it's in um, cleaners. It's in food, it's in so much, it's in plastic. So perfume. it's, yeah, it's in perfume, it's in a lot of things. And so. So what would happen if you smelled <laughs> popcorn? You're walking by and somebody made popcorn, what would happen to you? It's, my throat would get blisters all in my mouth and in my throat. A lot of times they would like split and then bleed and my throat would start closing up. I'd have to take Benadryl and um, that was pretty common. I also got asthma from that, an, an asthma diagnosis from that. Um, so I have my inhaler and I would have to take that. It was just albuterol because my lungs would start doing the same thing as my throat of the swelling. Um, if, if I actually ate something or drank something that had a corn byproduct, like um, bottles of water that there's corn in the plastic or the minerals added to it, I'd drink that. I could actually need an EpiPen because my throat would just swell. How many months or years did you have this corn sensitivity or allergy before I, you had come to me? So I developed this allergy in October of 2016. 16. So, mm -hmm. and we started in the end of 19. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, do you have this corn sensitivity or corn allergy anymore? I don't anymore. I ate a taco the other day, actually. <laughs> and so, like before, it's just why the corn was such a big deal to me was I was you know it's through my high school years that i developed this corn allergy and i couldn't be a part of so many things because oh we're all going out to dinner oh i can't go because i can't sit in a restaurant um you know i want to go out and do something on my own well i have to make sure i have gas in my car and i'll have it for the whole trip because like i couldn't pump my own gas or even really be outside at a gas station because there's ethanol and gasoline which is corn and it would make my throat close and i'd start to pass out um, Can you tell me something about table salt too? Yeah, iodized salt has dextrose in it, and dextrose is made with cornstarch. There's a lot of things you learn. Also, enzymes are grown on high fructose corn syrup, so if you're taking enzymes, yeah, I had to take an EpiPen because of that. So it was pretty, pretty difficult for you. Yeah, it was difficult. It was a struggle for those. Uh, those few years and um, now I, I haven't had to use any Benadryl or EpiPens for or my inhaler for many months uh, let's see I used my last EpiPen in like February of 2019 mm -hmm. so right before I came here and then I was still using Benadryl when I would have a flare-up but um, after we started, I haven't had to take Benadryl, I mean, except Benadryl. for one time. One time. Mm -hmm. So we're together for more than a year, yeah. cleaning you out from different infections and chemicals that make these sensitivities happen, that make the, that make the ligament laxity and the, and the, the EDS and make the, the vomiting, makes it all happen. I practice mm -hmm. a very unique system. I'll put my website here on the screen so you'll be able to go to that website and learn more about my, my unique rapid health recovery system here that's helped her so much but you could breathe now you don't get blisters you can eat corn you can smell corn you can pump gas you can eat salt nothing is nothing better yeah and then i don't vomit and i don't pass out because we're fixing and not cause it. this is not about staying away from corn realizing she had a corn problem staying away from it this is about fixing the reason why she had the corn problem so she can enjoy the corn again mm -hmm. as long as it's organic because we don't want gmo yeah